Hey tankers and welcome back to World of Tanks with PR154 where we are once again in the hot seat of the premium tier 8 Czech tank destroyer SHPTK TVP100. It's a bit of a mouthful, I prefer to call this vehicle Sputnik, there's another nickname getting around that I dare not repeat here today, uh, it's not a particularly flattering one. And I'm gratefully joined here today in Platoon by a couple of members of the Flying Squirrels Clan, they are great supporters of the content and great providers of hot sauce. In the premium tier 8 Czech heavy tank Škoda T56, we have no chill. And we're also joined by TVB in the premium tier 8 German medium tank Kampf Panzer 7RH. So in our last video, we looked at an article that I penned about Sputnik and the broader Queen of the Night event. Uh, so Queen of the Night is the fourth chapter of Battle Pass Season 7. That is the now, now the delivery model for tanks like this. They're used to be a bit of a marathon, uh, sort of an, an experience points driven marathon. That's gone by the wayside in favour of this battle pass integration. So the article goes into a bit of detail about that, uh, about how it works, what sort of effort you need to put into it, uh, and also makes a bit of a value assessment about, well, is it worth it if you have to pay full price for this vehicle? Of course, we go into the technical and tactical characteristics of the, of the Sputnik, and of course, there's a bit of um, gameplay at the end of it as well, not to leave that out. Um, but in any case, it's a sniper tank destroyer, which enables you to do things like this. Hitting targets from long range with a rapid ability to follow up. And uh, follow up we do in style. Let's take a look at that one again. And I think they'll be feeling that one tomorrow. So with that rather explosive intro, let's get into some of the nitty gritty of it all. You have a damage per minute of about 2900 hit points per minute, which is the best you can get out of a turreted tank destroyer at tier eight. Now you achieve that with a 250 hit point alpha shell that goes down range every 5.18 seconds at a base. So high damage per minute, low damage per shot, a bit like the E25 in that sense. Um, the shells have quite a high penetration value for tier compared to E25, however, where your standard AP will penetrate for 270 millimeters of armor, Whereas the heat shells, the premium heat shells, will penetrate for 330, which is absolutely fantastic and will keep this vehicle relevant. Uh, in fact, both shells will keep this vehicle relevant when facing off against tier 10s, as your matchmaking will incline you to do so from time to time. The jewel in the crown of this one, however, is the high explosive shell. It hits for 420 hit points of alpha and will penetrate 100 millimeters of armor. So if you're at the point of the game where you're engaging some of the softer targets like tank destroyers, medium tanks, light tanks, you can absolutely shred them with 4,900 hit points per minute at a base. And of course, both those damage per minute figures, you can of course enhance with, uh, with crew training or equipment. And on the topic of shreddings, unfortunately, that's exactly what's happened to our poor old platoon mate, No Chill absolutely nuked by superior numbers they're pouring between the eight and zero line. So we're going to hightail it back towards a desperate defense of the cap. But we'll talk about the gun in the meantime, though, because a tank destroyer, it's all about the gun. And one of the tactics that you need to be aware of with this vehicle is that you have high damage per minute, low damage per shot, uh, which means you basically need to set up where you can start firing and keep firing without that fire being interrupted by return fire. Uh, so we're lining up on this IS-3 we're making use of this soft cover between us. We've been able to find the Alpine Tiger. That's one shotable for us and send it back to the garage that we do. One of the things you might also notice though is this vehicle has quite a low muzzle velocity. 900 meters per second is, is what you'll notice. So take note of that as you see the shells flying through the air as we line up on the IS-3, lining up, and we do manage to land the shot there. I guess the, the trajectory is going to be difficult to see between this fern, but it is really important to manage. Um, now, you might find your efficiency as a sniper is significantly compromised this, by this, because you are going to be leading shots. Um, once you get used to it, though, it's not too bad, but even so, trying to engage moving targets at distance can become a bit challenging, even with all the penetration in the world. So what do you do about that low muzzle velocity? There's, there's no way you can buff it in any way, shape or form. So your answer there might be, well, let's just get closer to the target. Now, the problem with doing that is your concealment values and your view range values are actually pretty average. Uh, in fact, most medium tanks and light tanks at tier are, are going to outspot you. 
and you really don't have the armour to withstand the abuse that's going to come back in your general direction. Granted, the frontal armour is a bit better than the likes of Scorpion G, so uh, you don't need to necessarily worry about being shredded by high explosive shells in the same fashion, but certainly against shells that are designed to penetrate, you really don't stand much of a chance. So managing those crew skills and equipment capabilities against how close you want to be to the enemy becomes a real matter of testing the waters and finding your comfort zone there. Returning back to the gun, the other thing I would say is that gun depression of 6 degrees can be a bit of a limiting factor. So it makes it difficult to play the vehicle from hull down because in order to play from hull down you actually need to get up onto a ridgeline and expose a lot of vehicle in order to engage. So um, I would suggest if you attempting any kind of hull down play, do it from a distance where you're not going to be counter spotted and snotted because um, again you're not going to last very long in those situations if you're getting fired upon and you're not going to be able to keep your damage per minute up. And let's face it that's the entire point of this vehicle not being seen and just shredding enemy vehicles with your damage per minute. Now it looks like we're a bit campy on the cap here and that is because I was worried about those barasks and those concerns were somewhat validated by the fact that at least one of them has popped up. We are looking for the other. We don't quite have a shot on the first. Where is the second? Ah, there it is. And it's one shottable for us. So an instant garaging for that vehicle, and that just leaves the one Barask. Now it does manage to get a shot into us, and, and that's uh, taken a few hit points off us, but we're still in a position where I think we could quite comfortably eat two more shells. So we're now going to head into Brawl. And this is a that's something that this vehicle can do with a reasonable degree of comfort. Um, between its damage per minute, it has actually quite good mobility. 55 kilometers per hour forward, 20 k's backwards, good hull rotation, good turret rotation. So uh, if you don't mind eating a few rounds and you know you can out DPM or get kills on the enemy quickly, just go for it. And rounding the corner on the Barask, eating the first round, eating the second round and we managed to knock it out unfortunately having taken a few hit points really concerned about that Caliban behind us but uh, for whatever reason it did not have the opportunity to shoot at us and that suits me just fine because with only 76 hit points left uh, there's not too much that's keeping this tank held together so we're hoping that we can use a bit of this terrain and and maybe uh, maybe out shoot this vehicle just by virtue of our better precision. It's still able to spot us though. Um, we were spotted there before we released that shot in its general direction and I don't know where the IS-3 is but I certainly don't see it out spotting us either for all the uh, for all the faults with the view range and concealment that we described earlier in the video. This is turning into quite a tight contest. My platoon mate TVB, they are down to their last 18 hit points, which uh, is a bit of a concern. We're easily one-shottable to both those enemy tanks. So uh, we do need to try to use every advantage we have on vision and mobility over the two heavy tanks. Gingerly poking either side, um, but TVB gives us the indicator that maybe we should head out to H2. Uh, that seems like a pretty good idea, uh, so that's what we'll do. So we did speak about the mobility there. Uh, that's that's quite a handy um, handy attribute to this vehicle. We spoke about the concealment. Uh, we spoke about the view range, average stats that need to be managed. We spoke about the guns. There's a lot of pros. There's a couple of cons. Uh, I think the pros, for the most part, outweigh the cons. So all things considered, out in the field is where we really want to be. If we're going to outspot or out camo enemy heavy tanks, the field is where it's going to be. We're not going to be able to do that effectively in the city. Now we can see that TVB has headed out into the north. They've been able to draw both those two enemy heavy tanks out. So we are now pushing north with all due haste, trying to get our gun onto them. As fast as we are though, uh, Pearl River is a pretty big map, so we are <laughs> trying to W key as hard as we possibly can to get there. Uh, and I guess that comes into question your builds. And we talked about it earlier that um, early on you really want to build up your confidence of concealment and view range. So if you're still on your first 
crew skill, you might be running with binoculars and camo net. As you develop into your second crew skill, uh, getting a bit more confidence, you might switch to coated optics and low noise exhaust. Um, once you have your five skill crew across the board though, you might even start consider adding turbocharger or agility builds or something like that. The gun rammer, I still feel is an essential addition, just making that great DPM even better. And we're really going to need it here because unfortunately TVB was knocked out and wrapped up by the two heavy tanks, but we did get the messaging that he had left them in a pretty dire hit point position, left them with a tremendous repair bill, and so didn't die in vain. So we're just trying to position to get the angle on these two heavy tanks. Um, hopefully they'll they'll push the ridge to get back into the city and we've been able to spot the caliban zeroing in using our 1.25 seconds of aim time firing again we damage the caliban it's been able to spot us it's sending shells back towards us missing with both the first and second shots and we're able to knock it out sending it back for our fifth kill of the game following up with a shot on the is3 a top gun finish that's worth its own cinematic victory lap And with that cinematic finish out of the way, let's take a look at the results. For our efforts there, that was an Ace Mastery Badge in the Premium Tier 8 Czech Tank Destroyer, the SHPTK TVP 100 or Sputnik. We also picked up two Battle Heroes medals, the Top Gun medal for accounting for at least six kills on the enemy team, and also the Tanker Sniper medal. That is one that comes with a couple of conditions. We have to cause the most damage from anyone else on the team from a distance of at least 300 metres. We need to fire at least eight shots. The firing accuracy must be at least 85%. Our penetration rate must be at least 80%. And the damage caused from a distance of over 300 meters must exceed our own hit points and needs to be at least a thousand hit points. Crucially, we also need to not hit allies at all during the battle. So they're really testing your precision and your effective precision as well. We've also picked up quite a few badges of merit here as well. Some we won't go into because this was a press account and doesn't have the veterancy of 30,000 battles behind it like my own does. But we did manage to get the demolitions expert for ammo racking that centurion right at the front end of the battle. We also picked up the fire for effect medal for doing at least our hit points and damage. In this case, nearly 2,700 hit points of damage inflicted on the enemy. And we also got the Bruiser Medal for causing damage to enemy internal modules or crew members at least five times in the course of the battle. Having a look at the detailed report, we were not top on experience this particular battle. That goes to my platoon mate TVB of the Flying Squirrels Clan in the Kampfpanzer 7 RH. That's the Tier 8 Premium German Medium Tank. They managed to take three kills, but slightly outstripping us on the damage and experience there with over 2,700 hit points of damage inflicted on the enemy team. Special mention on the enemy team to the Barask Platoon, who were in the top three of their experience earned, and their Caliban accounting for a lot of kills and a lot of damage against our team but not carrying quite hard enough today bearing in mind that the difference at the end of the day was down to our last 76 hit points and this brings us to our detailed report where i have activated the premium account on this press account um Overall, we've come away with a bit of a tidy profit here, 27,000 credits in the black. This was tempered somewhat by quite an ammunition bill. We really needed those kills in the late game, so I did switch to the heat when we were engaging the IS-3 and Caliban right at the end there. We also had a bit of a repair bill there, so uh, I guess as a press account, which doesn't have a huge reserve of its own consumables, well, it was going to hit our wallet. 
Under normal circumstances, you'd expect that we had those consumables anyway, having picked them up in an equipment or consumable sale, but not to be with this account. Um, so that has impacted our profitability overall this game, but still a result we were exceedingly happy with. And if you've got a result that you're happy with and you'd like to share with the community, then please reach out over Discord or any of the links below. We'll do our best to sort you out. In the now, I do apologize in the slowdown of videos. We have been reviewing the uh, Sputnik and I'm, as you can tell, I've been experimenting with a couple of new techniques, which has uh, elongated our production time somewhat, but I hope you'll agree the quality of some of these outputs is uh, improving. So please do let us know what you think in the comments below. In the meantime, Take care out there.